Worldwide gives you the news you need when you need it. Everything from up-to-date news, sport, entertainment, and weather is now just a must. You also get access to a variety of multimedia clips, podcasts, full news bulletins, and the latest investigative journalism, all via RSS subscription. Get all this and more. Leaders of non-Christian faiths in Italy have been giving their reactions to Benedict's departure and looking ahead to a new era. Despite angering many Muslims during his reign, the last pope also made conciliatory gestures and some say inspired more intense dialogue between the two religions. Euronews asked the head of the Islamic and Cultural Center in Rome what hopes he had for the new pope. I think that our hope is to see communities of believers search together for solutions to the world's problems. And particularly to avoid religious wars and above all to find common ground on which to work and in particular find universal values to which all believers can relate. Rome's chief rabbi, seen here with Benedict, had a similar message regarding future interfaith relations. Riccardo Di Segni was asked what his expectations were of a new pope. Despite some well-publicized controversies which placed a strain on Catholic-Jewish relations, the rabbi praised Benedict and said he hoped his successor would continue in the same vein. Benedict, as did some previous popes, showed the path to follow, he said. His guidance was about dialogue and respect for Judaism. Our wish now is not to go back from the point we've reached. For America's re-elected president, the traditional inaugural ball was a brief moment of celebration before the tough work resumes. As in 2009, the song the presidential couple chose to dance to was Let's Stay Together. As four years ago, Obama used the occasion to appeal for unity. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. But he also highlighted immigration reform, gay rights, gun violence and climate change, all issues that are guaranteed to bring fierce clashes in Congress and beyond. He confirmed that improving the plight of America's poor will be a second-term priority. For we, the people, understand that our country cannot succeed when a shrinking few do very well and a growing many barely make it. We believe that America's prosperity must rest upon the broad shoulders of a rising middle class. The Republican opposition has shown signs of wanting to work together, but it's unlikely to lie down in the battles to come. There are unlikely to be any such intimate moments in Congress. Obama's first term saw his agenda consistently blocked. Many will now be watching to see whether he'll seek compromise or confrontation. Trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly. Courteous. For Zach Walls, being a Boy Scout was a major part of his childhood. He joined when he was just six years old, and his lesbian parents actively participated in running his local scouting group. Some parents were a little, you know, apprehensive and, and skeptical, but it, you know, they quickly came around when they saw that my mom's just wanted a positive scouting experience for me and for my friends. But others have found themselves singled out by the organization. I got the phone call, you need to resign because you're gay. Jennifer Tyrell had been a scout leader for a year. Despite assurances that her homosexuality wasn't an issue, Jennifer was kicked out of the program last spring. 
So she started a petition to pressure the Boy Scouts of America to change its policy. Um, we mean, you know, we mean no trespassing. We mean no harm. We're not here to threaten. We, we're saying, look how many people support this change. Being a Boy Scout is a tradition that has been passed down for generations here in the United States. But policies here in the U.S. contrast sharply to international counterparts. For example, homosexuals are not restricted from membership in Canada or even most European associations. Even the U.S. Girl Scouts have a different policy, accepting gay and transgender members into their association. The Boy Scouts of America have almost 3 million members, and 70% of the troops are sponsored by church groups who oppose homosexuality. In 2000, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled the group has a constitutional right to refuse gay members. It's a policy many parents want upheld. It's not hate, it's not bigotry, it's a choice about how to raise my children in what I perceive to be my Christian values. Thomas and Ingmar fell in love 21 years ago and got married 11 years after that. They adopted a baby boy and girl in the United States, but here in Germany only Thomas could legally be recognized as a parent. That left a lot to chance. Until the court decision, if Thomas died, there was no guarantee Ingmar could continue to raise the kids. These children have the right to live with their parents and be um, um, not in danger of being discriminated, not being in danger of having uh, financial problems if one of their parents has uh, um, a severe damage or uh, gets ill or uh, dies. And this is the only the topic. How do we deal with these children and how can we make the situation for the children better? In one sense, the ruling puts an end to a form of discrimination against children as much as against gays and lesbians. That's because before the ruling, the natural born child of one member of a gay or lesbian couple could be adopted by the other member. But that wasn't possible for adopted kids. They're getting ready here to open Germany's first Rainbow Family Community Center, a place for gay and lesbian mothers and fathers to get advice, help and compare notes. The court decision is seen as a big step forward. It's a very important ruling. Over the last years, a lot of homosexuals have felt really resigned because adoption was not seen as an option to start a family. Thomas says the gay rights struggle in Germany has been long and hard, but that things are changing here as they are across Europe. And when it comes to kids, he says, what really matters is giving them a good home where they feel loved and cared for. Nick Spicer, Al Jazeera, Berlin. Look like you pulled some kind of move up there, man. You saved a lot of lives. We are in a dive. I have no control of my side. We got there. Everybody in brace positions. The way you landed that plane was nothing short of a miracle. I see nothing but houses. Evan, listen to me. Trim us nose down. The plane fell apart at 30,000 feet. We're gonna roll it. What, okay. what do you mean, roll it? Ready? Here we go. Denzel Washington stars as an alcoholic pilot in a new thriller called Flight. Just go to the pubs. No, no, no. No, I mean, it's, it's a complicated character, but, uh, you know, you, you, you work on the flying part of it, you know, I was, had the opportunity to uh, work with the uh, flight simulators. British actress Kelly Riley plays a recovering heroin addict in the film. It's a big American movie and um, it's my first, but to bring it back to London, it's, uh, that's what it's about for me. My family are seeing it for the first time tonight. Um, it's a complicated adult drama. It's, it's a big sort of thrill with the, with the action part of the movie. It's everything I want to see in a film. And I, it, it makes a difference when you're proud of something. Irma Thurman and Hilary Swank were among a galaxy of A-listers at the Giorgio Armani Privé Couture show during Paris Fashion Week. Since I started acting, Armani was sort of the pinnacle of elegance and in early days in, in Hollywood and glamour. I think one of the first designers really who entered Hollywood and was dressing actresses from the very beginning. The collection was a nicely judged mix of timeless classics and exotic innovation. A 
huge lightning bolt shooting down the catwalk added to the eclectic energy and underlined the theme, which was all about intensity. Alexandre Vautier's collection was called Cold The bursting of Spain's property bubbles claimed another victim, with developer Real Urbis filing for insolvency. This comes after it failed to renegotiate more than three and a half billion euros of debt with its creditors. They include Santander, BBVA, Bankia and Banco Popular. The insolvency petition now goes to court and a judge will decide its fate. The company is now closer to becoming Spain's second largest ever bankruptcy. The biggest was property and construction group Martinsa Fedesa, which defaulted on 7 billion euros of debt in 2008. A woman has been taken to hospital after dousing herself with flammable liquid and setting herself on fire in a bank in Spain. It's happened in a town near Valencia. No reason's been given for the woman's action, although Spanish banks are being blamed for a wave of mortgage foreclosures, evictions and at least five default-related suicides in recent months. After elections have left Italy severely divided, Brussels on Tuesday expressed its concern over the potential political deadlock that might lead the country to further instability. The election in Italy has for sure a very difficult result for the country, also for the European Union as a whole. We need uh, a stable government in one of the most important uh, member states of the European Union. Italy is a G8 state, G8 country, it is the fourth economy within the European Union, one of the pillars of uh, the Eurozone. So what happens in Italy affects all of us. Mersani's centre-left bloc won the lower house vote but failed to secure a majority in the Senate. Formal three-time prime minister in Italy was the second strongest force. Under Italian law, however, control of both houses is needed to govern. As strong coalitions are unlikely to emerge, Italy might head towards new elections in the upcoming months. The attempt uh, that all political and democratic forces in the country should try to find a way of dialogue to check where are uh, where is cooperation possible, where are agreements possible, also to check where are entire disagreements. This is what is necessary now in the next coming days and weeks. I hope that Italy will find a way to stability in both of the chambers of the Italian parliament. Throbbing with energy and fever, the pearl of thongs on the day of Pentecost are vivid and memorable. Reverend Diana Edu uses her skill as a journalist and communicates the deep mysteries unveiled to her on the purpose of Pentecost. This book is the revered word priest on its authority alone. Reverend Diana's strong theology and unquenched spirit are evident even in her writings. Her years of preaching on a secular TV as an evangelist, prophet and preacher's skilled exegist has persuaded her listeners to a genuine conversion. Experience the power of the scriptures and your divine inheritance of the gift of thongs on the day of Pentecost. Discover why Christ appeared to his disciples and learn how she unveils that where there is no Passover, there cannot be a Pentecost. A book you should keep for a lifetime. Rain down from heaven.